So good morning or good evening or good night, depending upon where you are and, and, and when you're watching this. If you're live with us, it is 10, 10 a.m. Central Time, Monday morning on March the 11th, 2019. And this is our Make Money Now coaching call about mega open houses. So we've talked about the core four uh, lead gen sources, um, you know, farming, working our center of influence, working with online leads and mega open houses. And I posted in our Facebook group a, um, a video that Tom Ferry does about mega open houses. And you're going to glean information about open houses, about mega open houses from a number of different sources. And you're going to use the ones that end up being the most effective for you. And what I have found is that I end up doing a hodgepodge depending upon what's going on or what the situation is. But the more, more is better when it comes to doing an open house. I just want you to think about that is if you're thinking about, should I do this with my open house and it is more than you're currently doing, then the answer is a resounding yes. So Real quick, just to start off, just and, and I have this slide in each of these Make Money Now presentations that I do so that there's an understanding of where this information is coming from. So I have used open houses effectively in, in my career. I was the number one new agent in Florida in 2000, 2000, 2005, 2006. I have sold over 120 million in real estate in one year. I, I heard just recently that selling over $100 million in a calendar year puts me in the top Point zero 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 one percent of real estate agents in the world. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what I heard. Um, I have listed over 120 properties in one calendar year. Um, I am a national trainer and coach. I've owned three different brokerages and I've worked with every major brand. I love almost every major brand. I'm the former chief operating officer of The Real Recruiter and John Cheplak's company's, uh, uh, the holding company of Chep Cheplak Solutions. And I'm a former Tom Ferry coach. So, the biggest question I get asked when I talk about mega open houses is, Chris, what's the difference between an open house and a mega open house? So the first is your audience. And I want you to think about the audience of a regular open house. The audience of a regular open house are the people who are going to drive by and potentially come to see the house. And we think our audience on a traditional open house is an unrepresented buyer. So the audience for a mega open house is not just an unrepresented buyer. We're going to get some of them, but the audience is everyone in the neighborhood. The audience is local businesses. The audience is, is everyone who could potentially drive by at any time of the day. The audience is everyone you know that's in your sphere of influence. I, I say this a lot, but the main job of a real estate agent is to demonstrate their competence and relevance over time so that when someone has a real estate situation, they reach out to you. Intent. I believe that intent is extremely important. If my intent in a mega open house is to create a beachhead into a community that I want to market to, that is the proper intent of a mega open house. It's not just, hey, I want to get some unrepresented buyers. It's I want to have a, a, a real presence with um, people that are in the neighborhood. And, and I would say this, if I had a choice of getting an unrepresented buyer or a neighbor who might be selling in the next three to six months, I would much rather get that neighbor. I would much rather get that neighbor because that neighbor and that potential seller is much more valuable to me long-term than a potential buyer. Preparation. So for me, I believe that in the daily uh, real estate agents tasks, open house preparation is one of the things that we spend an hour a day on. It doesn't matter if we've got an open house coming up this weekend or the weekend after. Uh, uh, I have a two week plan of how I prepare for an open house and with each day's daily activities about an hour a day. So daily open house tasks. These are the things that we should be doing on a daily basis to prepare for and to, and, and to be thinking about the mega open house. The first is knock 20 doors 
with the leave behind invitation. So I, I, I'm the type of person who is all or nothing. Uh, you know, I will either make a thousand calls or I'll make zero. I will knock on a hundred doors or I will knock on zero. And that is not an effective way to knock on doors. So here is my suggestion. My suggestion is when you pick an open house, you knock on 20 homes every day for the week or the two weeks, depending on how far in advance you're preparing with a leave behind invitation. The cheapest way to do a leave behind invitation is to just print one out and you leave it in their door. Um, next, call 20 neighbors. In addition to knocking on their door, you need to be calling these people and inviting them to the open house. The majority of the people that you call, you will get their voicemail. That is wonderful. You can then leave them an effective voicemail inviting them to the open house. Daily open house test number, number three is to meet one local business owner. Business owners in the neighborhood and in the area are our strongest leverage. And last, work locally for two hours. So I, I want to dig deeper into this, and I, I call it my Starbucks strategy. Uh, for those of you who were at our event over the weekend, um, uh, uh, um, the, the, the host of the or the, the MC of the event talks about his Cracker Barrel, uh, uh, um, you know, his, you know, meeting people at Cracker Barrel. And it's interesting because I did a Cracker Barrel training about 10 years ago that I think he was on. Um, and we were joking around about that. So work locally for two hours every day. So your normal computer work, the things that you're going to do, don't do it from home. Go to the Starbucks that is closest to your open house and sit there for two hours and do your work. Have an open house sign on the table while you're working. You will have at least one person come up to you and ask you, oh, you're a realtor? So where's the open house this week? And have your open house flyers there. This is amazing local marketing. There's also something else that every single Starbucks has, and that's a bulletin board where you can put your open house flyer up on that bulletin board. It's free marketing. While you're sitting there at that open house, that's when you get up, you leave everything there because nobody's going to steal your crap at, at Starbucks. It just doesn't happen. You just leave your crap there and you get up and you walk to the nearest business to that Starbucks and you tell them, hey, I'm doing an open house here in the neighborhood. And you strike up a, a conversation with that local business and get them to put your flyer in the front of their window, see if they have coupons you can hand out if there's some way that you can partner with them for your local, for your open house. Go big or go home. You know, it is, it is the most frustrating thing in the world for me when I have a new agent that I'm training to do open houses for and they get there five minutes ahead of time and they put an open house sign in the yard in that yard that's all they do and then they say open houses don't work well no that type of open house doesn't work so go big or go home you need at least 20 directional signs my strong suggestion would be go to house of magnets go to one of the other sign providers and you get a directional open house sign that has your name and it has your face on it. Pay a little bit extra, your name and your face. At least 20 signs. Every single way that a person could possibly come into your open house from every corner of the neighborhood, if one way in and one way out, then you need to direct people from that one way in and one way out. But at least 20 signs, directional signs. You want to have flyers in the windows of at least five local businesses. So if you're doing a one week preparation, it means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're meeting a business owner, you're talking to them, you're involving them in this business, you're involving them in your open house, and you're getting one of your open house flyers in their window. 
you want at least two sponsors for every open house. And you want them to provide some type of a giveaway. Something that I did on my open houses is I did a monthly drawing for everyone that came to my open houses. And this was uh, when iPads had just come out and it was for a free iPad. And I would, I would give away one iPad every month. This can be a Starbucks gift card. This can be as, as, as small as drawing for a buy one, get one free pizza coupon. It doesn't matter what it is. This gives you license to ask them for their contact information. One of the reasons why I like doing a monthly drawing for everyone that comes to any of my open houses is because then they, they're not afraid of giving me contact information because if they win, I need to be able to contact them. Does that make sense? Excellent. Live entertainment. I'm gonna talk about some different types of live entertainment. I don't mean you being there greeting people. That is live entertainment and some of us are very entertaining, but that's not what I mean. I want you to think about the types of things that are going to attract someone to come over to your open house and engage them. So whether it's a clown who is juggling in the front yard, if you need a clown contact, one of my neighbors is a clown, has a clowning company, uh, and they actually come out and they do juggling. It's, it's really funny because I pass, I walk by their house on a regular basis as they're walking up to my local box, and I'll see them out there juggling sabers in the front yard or things like that because that's, that's what they do. So you want to have live entertainment. I'll give you another great example of some live entertainment. I would guarantee that all of you know at least one pimply teenager who is in the band or the orchestra, the school orchestra, and your ability to invite that kid to come play at your open house and make him a professional, you know, give him something for that. Give her something for that. Um, make them a professional. Um, you know, even if it's a gift card, if it's, you know, talk to their parents about, well, you know, what are the things that are important to that kid and, and use that child and their performance as something that just deep, deeper ingrains you to the neighborhood. <coughs> I had a stand up guy, no word of a lie, a friend of mine who's a stand up comedian who did stand up standing in the bathtub of the master bathroom. And people could hear him throughout that, but they would come and they, they congregated there towards the master bathroom. There are lots of different things that you can do with live entertainment, but you need to have something live. You need to have something that is bigger than the other open houses that people are going to. And, and, and I just want to say this. These are the things that create a memorable experience for the neighbors. If you have one of the, I, I can't remember the name of the, the, the ice cream company that we used, local Plano ice cream company, an ice cream truck, and we had them come to our open houses and park their ice cream truck, and we would, you know, free ice cream for the neighborhood. Uh, and, and we didn't pay for it. That's why I said two sponsors with giveaways, right? So if, if you're doing one where it's expensive, where it's going to cost you $400, we, we, I, think we, I think we prepaid $200. We did $200 with ice cream um, for an open house. And, and I had a mortgage guy who would come and sit the open house with me, and he paid for that, right? So that's why I have, say, say at least two sponsors with some giveaways. Next, you need help. And when I say help, I don't mean someone else who can answer real estate questions, but someone else who can just direct traffic. Even if it's someone standing in the front yard with an open house sign, you know, the sign flippers, right? Something along those lines. Um, you dress somebody up in a big donkey costume, a big uh, a Donkey Kong costume, for those of us that are exited, that's you know, kind of like an inside joke, with, a, with an open house sign you know, that they're sign flipping, that is going to attract some people and they're going to be able to say, Hey, yeah, please, you know, just come right in. Um, this is going to give you an opportunity to not have to be in all places at all times so that you can be focused on two things. You can be focused 
on talking to the unrepresented buyers that come in and talking to the neighbors who come in who might know someone who might want to buy this house or who might be looking at selling in the near future, right? So preparation. Preview the competition for this house. Preview the competition for this house. So if there are four other homes in the subdivision that are for sale, you need to see those four other homes. You need to get in and preview those homes. You need to know what the competition looks like. So that if someone walks in and says, ah, you know what, this is nice, but you know, we just need higher ceilings. You can say, you know what? It's funny that you say that because one of the houses in the neighborhood that's for sale has higher ceilings. Would you want to go see that now? Right now, or when the open house is over, right? Depending upon the timing, depending upon the traffic. But you need to know that competition. The other thing that you really need to know is you need to know what I call competitive alternatives. So I want you to think about not being, not knowing a neighborhood and driving up into a neighborhood that you don't know, but that looks kind of cute and seeing an open house sign. Oh, wow, honey, look, this, this is an open house. We should really go in and take a look. And they walk in. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is wonderful. This is fantastic. And you hand them a flyer and they see the $700,000 price tag and they're a $300,000 buyer. And they go, oh my goodness, 700, there is no way, $700,000 for this? Well, did you know that over in Mesquite, for $200,000, you can get something twice this size? You can go, you're right. When would you like to get out and see those homes in Mesquite? Here are three homes in Mesquite that look a lot like this home, but are a lot less expensive because they're not in this neighborhood, right? Wow, this is a great house. Oh my goodness. You know, Craig, I I love this house, but you know what? I need a house with a three-car garage. Right? So if your house that you're in, that you're doing open house in, has an upstairs master bedroom, you need to have a comparable similar house that has a downstairs master that you can show them immediately, right? Because when they walk in and say, oh, well, you know, this is, this is good, but my, I've got bad knees. I don't want to go upstairs into a master bedroom. I want it all to be on the same floor. Or, you know, we need an in-law suite. Or, oh, wow, you know, this kitchen's nice, but I really don't like wood. I want a white kitchen, right? So, you need, that. you need to know what your alternatives are, and you need to know what those common alternatives are going to be by knowing the house that you're showing. <clears throat> okay, here's something that I do. I find it effective is the houses that I believe are the most similar, so my, my, my really best competition, I go ahead and I book a showing for right when my open house ends. So if I'm doing a two to four on a Sunday, I will book a showing at a, at a competitive house at four o'clock, right? Here's why, because if you have somebody walk in the door and you want to be able to show them that house, you already have it set up. Pre-promote, pre-promote. You want to start carrying around an open house sign a week before your open house so that everyone who sees you walking around Tom Thumb with your open house sign has an opportunity to walk up to you and say, why are you walking around with an open house sign? <clears throat> and you can say, wow, I'm doing this great open house at this great house in our neighborhood right here. And, and this is, you know, I keep forgetting to put out my pre-open house sign, and, and I, I told myself I'm going to carry it around until I put it out, so that's what I'm doing. 
So, you know, here's a flyer, right? Pre-promote your open house. You want to start talking about your open house on social media a week or two weeks before. Create an event on Facebook. <coughs> Invite people. Promote it. This is an event. This is the most important way for you to demonstrate your competence and your relevance to potential sellers and to potential buyers. Most importantly, potential sellers. Because if you can use this as a beachhead, and I want you to think about what a beachhead is. So the Battle of Normandy, when the United States invaded France at the end of towards the end of World War II, I, I, I've heard that this is you know one of the battles that had the most casualties. We've seen movies about it. Um, and all of this was for one purpose, and that was for our military to have a staging area in the location that we were carrying out battles. So I want you to think about your open house as a beachhead. It's your staging area for carrying out your attack to these local, these local residents that you want to have an effect on you want to start that process as early as possible. Here's some questions that I want you to think about. Do you know anybody who wants to live in this neighborhood? Hey, you know this neighborhood better than I do. Do you have anybody that you work with that might want to live here? Right? These are just good questions to ask uh, the neighbors and you really want to invite the neighbors to the open house. You want them there. And I'll tell you something else. So neighbors who don't want to move, you need them at your open house because they sell that house for you. What I, say about, what I say about how wonderful a house is means nothing compared to little blue haired Ethna who lives two doors down talking about how wonderful the neighborhood is and she's lived here for 20 years right? She sells that house and sells that neighborhood. So I'm going to, I'm going to share a new idea that I don't think anyone on, 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 on this call has heard me talk about before it is a skull group. So I want you to think about the four or five partners that you have who you can get them to share and endorse what you're doing on Facebook and in social media. So one is definitely a mor your mortgage guy. <clears throat> if you you want to be you want to be able to tell your mortgage guy, create a secret group on Facebook where the only people who are in this secret group are people who have told you, Chris, I love you and I want to help you be successful. You want to add them to that secret skull group in Facebook and you want to ask them to promote the things that you're doing on Facebook, right? So I, I suggest once a week you do a post and you ask those people, hey, do you see that post I just did about my open house in, McKin in, in Craig's Ranch Saturday? Could you please share that open house post that I just did, please, right? These are the members of your skull group. These are the people, your insurance guy, your mortgage guy, um, your home warranty person, people that are vested in your success as a real estate agent. And, and I want all of you to do something when you get a chance. I want you to go to Facebook and I want you to click on my profile. And I want you to scroll down a little bit. And I want, I, I, I want you to look at, when you look at what I'm posting about, do you get a good idea of what's important to me? Do you see real estate posts? Do you see 
encouragement and self-empowerment posts? Do you see motivational posts? Do you see EXP related posts, right? So these are the things that you're going to see on my timeline. So anyone who goes to my timeline is going to know who I am and what I'm all about. So here's what I would say to you. If someone goes and clicks on your Facebook account, I'm not talking about your real estate page. Nobody, nobody's ever been to your real estate page. Trust me. Nobody's ever been to mine either. Um, but your, your actual profile, when they click on you, do they get an ac accurate representation of, of who you are and what you're all about? Um, I had a, a, uh, a gentleman um, uh, this weekend who we were talking about social media strategy, and it was interesting. His politics were the exact opposite of my politics. And I encouraged him strongly to continue to talk about his politics on Facebook. Here's why. It attracts to him the people he wants to work with. Right? We work, we end up working with like-minded people. And, and we attract our own tribe. We work with our tribe. So the whole purpose of having social media is to have people interact with us and work with us that we would want to work with. So I have two minutes left and I'm just going to go through a, a quick few things, just some contact information. Chris1234 Weaver at gmail.com is my email address. You can also coach Dreamweaver at email.com, Chris.weaver at exprealty.com. My phone number is 469-431-5208. If you've got a question um, or you want to reach out to me, please feel free to do so. This is the Make Money Now coaching call. Invite your friends. If you've got value out of this, it is, it is the recording will be uploaded into the Make Money Now Facebook group. If you're not a part of that Facebook group, reach out to me. I'll make you a part of that Facebook group. Pop-up mastermind. Today's Monday, Tuesdays, Starbucks at the corner of Coit and Beltline in Richardson, Texas uh, from 11 o'clock until usually 2 or 3 or 4 in the afternoon. I do a pop-up mastermind. I'm there from 11 on. Um, there's usually at least four or five or six of us that show up. You've got any questions about real estate, um, you want to introduce somebody to EXP, you want to learn about mega open houses, you want to pick my brain up, about uh, going up market into the luxury market, you want to talk to me about what it was like to work with John Travolta and do aviation property, whatever the case may be, pop up Mastermind, feel free to come by. On Thursdays at... Noon, we do a presentation. It starts off at 11.30. Uh, I am very passionate about my involvement with my real estate company, EXP. I believe that it is a groundbreaking, different methodology and a different model. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about it, please join us at Anamia's uh, in Plano um, every Thursday. And fourth, the deep dive on new construction. If you haven't heard about it, it's this Wednesday in Prosper at Light Farms. We are talking about specifically how to market to new construction to get buyers and sellers. And um, if you want more information on that, please reach out to me. Um, if you're coming, please bring at least one friend. And that's it. Peace out. It's 1030. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of you um, on my next coaching call, which is at 1045. It's the same link. And that's the Talent Attraction Coaching Call. Have a great day.